Be honest. Since you got up this morning, have you done anything new? Tried any new foods? Listen to new music? Or taken a new route? The good news is, the day isn't over. Hey Lexus, turn it up. And the reinvented Lexus RX is definitely something new. With heart-pounding design, intelligent technology, and the first ever RX 500H performance hybrid, never lose your edge with the all-new Lexus RX. Click the banner to discover more. Experience amazing at your Lexus dealer. I wasn't late, Akash wasn't late, it was Idea Brew Studios that was late. Welcome to the Corner Flag, I'm Amog. I'm Mukesh. And I'm Akash. <laughs> Siddharth and Akhil are in the room with us and they had no idea that we were going to do this in the intro. They thought they had gotten away with it. Yeah, but also, I also wasn't late, by the way. Just because I feel like you forgot to say that. No, I did he, say he that. You said that. I said that. Oh, you, this is, you switched on late. You I switched on late. late. <laughs> okay, let me do that intro again. Mukesh was late <laughs> in his mind. His his body was here, but his brain was not. My brain was not. Now it's here, guys. Now it's all good. Are now, you drinking your tea? Is that what uh, woken you up? No, I'm just um, dreading the fact. I feel like I've become like Akash. I'm dreading the fact that I have to talk about Liverpool's fortunes. Or misfortunes. And that's like making me just not be focused. What is the misfortune that Liverpool is going through? Let's talk about that. Because what has happened in Liverpool's pre-season that is, uh, that is so detrimental to your mental health? Uh, it, I don't know if you've read, but Liverpool have the thinnest squad. They have only 22 players in their entire squad. That's because they let go of James Milner, who was a little bit overweight, let's be honest. <laughs> they let go of, I think, six, seven players. And now they've gotten only two players. And which means they're shot by a bunch of players and you know that Liverpool is an injury-prone team. So there is a very good chance that by the end of the season, they will have exactly 11 players left. Akash, do you remember the last episode? I think Mukesh had said that we finally made some good transfers. All the players that were uh, taking sucking at the teat of Liverpool, as he called it. Yeah, and all gone. those were the injury-prone players. Exactly. He said all our injury-prone players have gone. Now. Exactly. Like, oh, we're, a, a, we're an injury-prone team. Because... There are no new players coming in and the idea was that uh, there was a lot of hot gossip about how in the last one week there would be way more uh, signings coming in and nothing has materialized. Uh, and that has been very depressing to see that everyone's like, oh, we got a... I feel like for Christmas, we're the kids who got no toys. <laughs> got there's, there's three weeks till deadline day. Christmas is not here yet. Christmas is here. It's over. It's depressing. Akash, come on. Say something. <laughs> so you want to break the depressing tension of the room by introducing more depression into more the room. More depression, yeah. As well, guys, I, I, I'm going to say something nice. I want to start with uh, with a joke that I'd heard in the 90s and I'll bear with me for two minutes. It has a point. It's been but, happening for 200 episodes. Uh, <laughs> so in the 90s, you know, there was that phase of only Sardar jokes and everything was a Santa Banta joke. So yeah. there was a Santa Banta joke I remember hearing when I was in school which said that Santa goes to a barber for a haircut and he says, I want a haircut. Don't take my earphones off. He had earphones in his ear. He said, don't take my earphones off. Whatever you do, don't take my earphones off. So he's sitting on the barber's chair and he's getting a haircut and he starts taking a nap. Right. And he falls asleep and the barber is getting annoyed by the wires of the haircut, uh, the wires of the earphones. So he said, whatever, takes them off and Santa dies. And he's like, oh shit, what have I done? He puts the earphones on and the earphones, all, all the sound that's coming is breathe in, breathe out, <laughs> breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, now, now I'll get to the point. Everton have a new sleeve sponsor. Does anyone want to guess what it is? Is it Breathe? No. Is it Santa? No, it's... And I, I, I can't believe this is not a joke, but their sleeve sponsor is Kick. Because <laughs> <laughs> someone realized that they can not to play with them. <laughs> Let's on their sleeve, we will write K I C K, big capital bold letters, kick. And that is our sleeve sponsor. So. But basically, what that means is we need to look back at our prediction for most red cards because Everton players are now going to kick players. Yeah, they still don't get it wrong. I kick the ball. They yeah. just said kick. <laughs> this, is, this is a problem I didn't foresee. You think that's the why Ivan Tony got sacked because he saw bet football and he's like, started betting on everything. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, uh, fantastic stuff. Everton being Everton yet again. I just want to go back to that Santa Manda joke. Huh. Uh, 
because uh, that is about two minutes of time that nobody will recover. The n- nobody in this room, nobody who's listening to this podcast. But uh, interestingly, what I realized was for a joke from the nineties, for a Santa Banda joke from the nineties, very inclusive Santa Banda joke. Because Santa Banda is typically supposed to be a sardar, right? Sardar hair cut, kisi liye? Ha, utna nuance me main ghusa nahi tha. Correct. I was just like, oh, this is this is a. I mean, I just want to say to the to the Sikh uh, uh, Sardar community uh, uh, who who have oftentimes gotten offended by Santa Banta jokes. See, this this we are an equal opportunity offender. Mm. So and it had earphones, which means they were rich. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see earphones till 2010s, guys. <laughs> Bro, we have recorded remotely with you countless number of times. You haven't seen earphones till 2023 also. <laughs> I have to beg you to put on headphones. Then you have to go and borrow headphones from your watchman. True story. He couldn't find his headphones. Once he literally went down to his watchman to try and borrow headphones from them, <laughs> and then did the entire episode with just one earphone. He didn't working. ask me for Diwali gift and all that. Here, <laughs> he's like, he only gave me earphones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic! But there was football that happened last weekend. This uh, this uh, signals the start, the proper start of the of the football season. The Community Shield, one of the most important fixtures in English football, uh, or at least that's what Arsenal fans would like to believe, because they won it. They won a trophy. Yeah, not bad. Third trophy for Arteta at Arsenal. Which were the others? He's won one FA Cup, and I think didn't he win an? I think he won a Community Shield with them. He won mm. one Community Shield with them. He uh, he won an FA Cup, and yeah. he won the Community Shield as a result. And yeah. this is the second Community. Shield. This is precisely why we need to get Arsenal representation on this podcast. <laughs> Which was a better joke than your Santa Banta joke? So uh, <laughs> there was a point to the whole Santa Banta joke. <laughs> Everton is you put us at the risk of cancellation, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? This nascent podcast We've almost got much worse. <laughs> yeah, we've said much worse. That is very very true. Uh, but uh, great game. Uh, I, I think both City and Arsenal went uh, went went toe to toe in the entire game. Like it was very very evenly matched. Even though. At the start, it felt like City were dominating the game as they like to do. That's what their philosophy is. Uh, but the first goal came in the 77th minute. Cole Palmer getting a lovely curling effort from the edge of the box. Fantastic goal. Uh, what Guardiola has said about Cole Palmer is damn interesting. He said that last year he didn't play enough and he wanted to play more. His agent and him will need to talk. If he goes, he goes. But if he stays, we are happy to have him. मतलब ऐसा बच्चे लोग का इमोशनल टॉर्चर कर रहा है ये आदमी I feels like one of those things of if you want to go you go but if you want to stay there's a spot that you have to fight for yeah and i feel like um i don't know how city does this cuz with with um aguero they said uh guardiola said we can never replace him he's mm-hmm. irreplaceable and then they got erling haaland and now they lost riyad mahrez and we were talking about how mahrez is going to be a he's going to leave an important hole in mm-hmm. that city uh lineup mm-hmm. Goal, Palmer. That was a very Mares risky yeah. goal. The way yeah. he cut, the way he took that shot, it was like Mares didn't leave at all. So yeah. it feels like one of those things of, if you want to stay, you'll have to fight for your spot. If you But I mean, go, leave. I mean, it's Manchester fight. City. I'm sure Cole Palmer knows he has he has to fight for his spot because Phil Foden is on the bench. So, मतलब Cole Palmer is way down the pecking order. Yeah, yeah. and I would say that the next. Set of teams that Man City builds are probably going to be around Phil Foden, like how the last couple of teams were built around Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think it's amazing, actually. I think seeing Klopp's sentimentality work against Liverpool's own interests to see this sort of cold, calculatedness. I think it's amazing. I think yeah. it's a good manager. It doesn't bode well for anybody else, any yeah. other team. Yeah. Uh, but I think Man City have. Uh, Have good reasons to be hopeful for the next season. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, while watching the Community Shield, there was one thought that came to my mind: is that why is the second place team playing against Manchester City? Because typically, the Community Shield is Premier League winners versus FA Cup winners, and of course, Man City won the FA Cup as well. So, why the second place team? Like, what is their merit? Especially considering Manchester City can play against themselves. I would have actually the loved to shield. see a yeah. Manchester City A team versus B team. Exactly. Yeah. Would... Exactly. Karo na because at the end of the day you're just like, ha, ठीक है वो ही जीतने वाले हैं. तो उनको ही खेलने दो ना आपस में. Why? Why to waste another fixture? Why to get these players back from their pre-season tours a little early? Put them into a competitive fixture. <laughs> And also, why give Arsenal fans hope? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, they did have the hope. They did have the hope uh, for sure. And they went on to win it because in the 93rd minute it was Trossard who. 
who took a shot at goal and was deflected in uh, off the legs of Manuel Akanji, which took it to penalties. Was it ninety third? Ninety plus it? eleven, I thought. Yeah. Was it later? It, it was Nine. much later. It was uh, ninety plus ten, ninety plus eleven, because now we've gone back to the World Cup. Oh way yeah, of yeah, giving yeah. Stoppage time. Yeah. So it was in the tenth or eleventh minute of stoppage time. Chalo, tenth or eleventh minute, and that's when uh, the penalties happened. Uh, Trossard also looks like a great uh, signing again this season. I feel like he's going to play much bigger role. Uh, in that Arsenal lineup, uh, it's it, they look scary. They look scary. Also, I think just I think I'd forgotten how good Saliba was yeah. because he was yeah. out for the last quarter yeah. of the season, and yeah. then seeing him play uh, Colossus, I think yeah. he just uh, amazing yeah. controlled City. Yeah, uh, took their team. Uh, I think the goal was the I man. It was a brilliant goal by Cole. Yeah, uh, but I think. I think Saliba was, I think, for me, the standard performer. I'm excited. I'm, I hope he doesn't stay injured. Yeah. Because I know, say, when Van Dijk came back from injury, he was shit for a good six months. Mm. I hope that it doesn't look like that's the case with yeah. Saliba. So I think Arsenal look actually look much stronger than we gave them credit for yeah. uh, at the end of last season yeah. or even like a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Is there already a Saliba Makeba chant, or is that something that's waiting to happen? That, I feel I, like there's I, so much potential there. Yeah, if if there's any Arsenal fans who are listening, please write into us and tell us if there is a chant like that uh, that is happening. If not, we'd love to like record it for you and send it to you. That would be amazing. have it play at the Emirates. That would be great, considering Makeba is also uh, uh, trending on Instagram these days. Every reel, oh. every second reel has that as the background uh, music for some reason. Wow, uh, it's isn't Makeba like five, seven years old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh. Instagram just randomly picks up these songs and just trends. I'm right? look at Amok, staying in touch with the youths. Exactly, <laughs> right. I'm Being on Reels and TikTok. <laughs> that was my New Year's resolution. <laughs> uh, the TikTok is not available here, bro. Oh. Chinese company. <laughs> That's how to touch you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Taka duck. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. No, but I, I honestly completely agree with what you said about Saliba, right? And I feel like one of the most important things for Arsenal to do is to keep that centre half pairing of Gabriel and Saliba fit throughout the season because that is the best center of pairing that they have. If you take either one of them out, whoever is there as a backup, whether it's Kivior or whether it's Rob Holding who will play, they're just not at that level. And they have they have no depth in those positions. So they have to make sure that these two are are constantly fit throughout the season. That's going to be a big task because they are playing the Champions League now. And I feel like it's a great partnership because it's a calm man and a mad man. <laughs> Saliba is the calm one Gabriel is the one who can murder someone yeah. Kuch bhi ho sakta hai uske saath. So and that is the that is the type of partnership that you need. Even at United, you're seeing Lisandro Martinez and Rafael Varan. Like yeah. it's a very clear <laughs> distribution of duty between the two of them. And there in the United defense, there's the killer, there's the calm person, and there's the person who's going to be killed also. <laughs> exactly. When you play three at the back, <laughs> yeah. that's the one. And now there's the even more mad fucker in Andre Onana who'll who'll do all the killing. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's true. So there we go. More yeah. murderers. <laughs> oh, more murderers in the building. <laughs> if we're talking about podcasts on a podcast. Uh, uh, but yeah, so the the, the, the Trossard goal uh, uh, took the game to penalties. De Bruyne missed his penalty. Did we see that coming? I feel I did. Oh, really? Yeah. I was surprised. I just felt like you know, again, it's nice to see him mess up. I, don't yeah. know, I think very few times. He's only him. human, man. He's only human after all. I think that was just nice to see him yeah. uh, mess up. Why did you actually see that coming? Instinct, yeah. I don't even at an instinctual yeah. level. Yeah. I tell oh. you why. Because he's coming back from a hamstring injury. He's not fully fit. Yeah. That's mm. primarily the reason why he was starting on the bench. When he came on, also, he did not look at full fitness. I think there was one moment where he was the recipient of a heavy tackle and he was kind of limping a little. So he was not in the best of shape. Uh, and even if he's coming on for the last 20, 30 minutes and doing the shootout, I don't think he should have been brought on for even that much of time because he was absolutely not in the right shape. And that might affect the rest of his season. That might affect how he recovers from that injury fully in the coming few weeks. And when he went up to step the, uh, when he stepped up to take the penalty, he did look a little unsure. You know, and Akash, you and I have spoken about this. You know, when people go off for penalties, you you can tell. Yeah. You can tell by instinct language, with their body language if they're going to miss it or if they're going to hit it. And it just felt to me that De Bruyne was going to miss it and I was right. But you know, I feel like this entire community shield is a part of Guardiola's tactics. Every, even the last community shield, yeah. Haaland had a shit game. Like, it was unbelievable how shit Haaland was yesterday. It was unbelievable how shit Haaland was last year. Yeah. It feels like one of those things where Guardiola is like, you know what? 
let them win it yeah. let's give them some hope they everyone's going to be like you know city doesn't have it this yeah. season de bruyne has lost the plot he's over the hill guardiola's coming undone it's one of those things of let them underestimate us yeah. kya karenge community shield ka yeah. in fact at the end of the uh, in the post match conference they one the reporters told him that this is the third a uh, community shield that you have lost mm. so he said yeah but we got to three community shields because we won three premier leagues mm. that's what's important and i feel like it's a it's a 38 game week season which for guardiola is like it starts at minus 1 it starts mm. on the community shield let's give them a feeling that we have a false start yeah but do you think that this is the psychological effect that will that will that will be the predominant psychological effect because i thought for arsenal to win the trophy would really give them a boost for the rest of the season and especially against a team like man city the team that they went toe to toe with for the title last season they came very very close and <clears throat> keep in mind that last season arsenal could not beat man city across all competition okay let me tell you as the winners of last community shield <laughs> it says nothing it bodes nothing it's not a, it's not necessarily a great sign or a bad sign it's a nothing sign and i think it is true i think city have this pattern of starting slow they cook in the middle and they mm. run in the end and i think yeah exactly and i think maybe he prefers that because he's trying all his combinations out he's not mm. putting out his best team because i think he's still i want to say he's figuring out figuring out figuring out his best team but even the players are probably just taking shape yeah. and i think when teams begin to wear out which is typically about 18th to 24th game around that time yeah. is when his players kick in right and because he has a squad depth they're much fresher than everybody else mm. so i think he can afford a luxury of starting with the community shield about say four weeks the first month of bad football mm. and still recover by the end because he knows he's got the squad depth and the technical prowess in his players to kill it which is exactly what he did last year as well like the only reason arsenal were on top through the season was because the first four five game weeks city were shit they yeah. were losing games they were drawing games they had just not hit their stride yeah. and in spite of that like mukesh said they ran away with it so i think it's a part of that oh look we're shaky we can't play football ooh don't be scared of us yeah Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if it's a pro. Like, I'm not sure if it's a calculated process, but I do know that's the method. Yeah, like right. that is how it starts. Like, you do get new players in. I think he's gotten a bunch of players. Some old yeah. players have gone out. Uh, whereas I think uh, for Arsenal, it is more about here's our best card. Yeah, right. Here's our trump card or whatever. You're gonna put the best front up because they did play their best centre back, yeah. which is a bit risky to play your best team in these sort of games, and then and risk injury etc. Mm. Whereas the Guardiola is like, okay, I'm just gonna try out. Man I'm players. I'm going to play Cole Palmer because his yeah. agent is creating a ruckus. Yeah. You know, yeah. He has that kind exactly. of luxury. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk about uh, the two, uh, uh, the three new Arsenal signings who all who all made a <coughs> made an appearance in this game. Uh, Declan Rice, Kai Havertz, and Julian Timbers <laughs> making their uh, uh, competitive debuts for Arsenal. How do you, how 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 do we feel about? I think single-handedly, all Arsenal fans realize Kai Havertz was a bad move. Like you know, really, I, I really thought he was poor, and I think. a lot of arsenal fans who a lot a lot as in maybe about 10 that i know were like i think we were bit on the group they were like oh my god this guy shit we did a bad uh, move by signing him and they were but that's be... but that's indian football fans in general or just football fans in general like sure, one sure. bad game and it's the worst signing no, sure, but if you're just going by one good game, game best signing Correct. no but i feel like in this game i thought he was getting into all the right yes. positions he was receiving the ball really well yeah. it was just that finishing that he has always been poor with yeah. i think even at chelsea he couldn't hit that finishing rhythm that he had yeah. uh, in the bundesliga but yeah. I thought he was getting into all the right spots. No, but yeah. he's always been in the right spot, especially around teams. And this clear, this team was clearly formed to put him in that right spot. And he's not he's not clearly asked to do too many defensive duties. So finishing is the thing that's expected of him. Like it's, I mean, it's like no, but I feel can't save goals. No, but I feel like he was being played in more of a false nine. He was dropping deep quite often, and. He was doing a good job when he was dropping deep. He was breaking down plays uh, in the Man City half as well. The thing is, with those finishes that we were talking about, I think we should also consider the fact that he got the ball in a very tight angle with three defenders on him. So getting the ball in that tight angle, turning and shooting with three defenders on you is ridiculously tough. Yes, an elite level striker should be able to score from any position. Fair enough, but for somebody who is just joined a new team is just learning how to play in the system that arteta wants to play i feel like the signs that he's shown in this first game and again just his first competitive game 
the fact that akash like akash said he's he's making the right runs he's finding himself in the right positions is is really really good and i feel like he will come good for them not only in terms of finishing but also in terms of creating because saka can finish martinelli on the left flank can finish and ketia can come in in the second half and he can finish so there's it's not like the entire burden of finishing is going to be on kai havertz honestly i think he's going to help by taking away a player or two yeah, that's exactly. probably yeah. what i can i don't think he's going to become a great striker he will probably have one or two great goals yeah. that come like especially against the bottom half teams yeah. uh because he might not be as skillful and he might be able to get away from them uh from players who play for those teams uh and maybe because he can do skills and he can like get into spaces he probably takes away an extra player which probably frees up other players yeah. and maybe that's the role that's the best but i doubt it's going to be that he's going to be the either the creator in terms of assists or he's going to be a goal scorer in terms of being a striker i, do, I doubt he's going to be that player yeah I, which yeah. might still be a great role but i think even based on this this is what was happening at chelsea and mm. this is what he's still doing i feel like he'll not end up being like mo sala or kevin de bruyne in terms of getting to their skill level but i feel like he has the potential to be the next chelsea player who didn't get enough time to get acclimatized to the league and then moved somewhere else and proved himself you know like yeah. sala and de bruyne had a god awful time at chelsea and chelsea is one of those places that doesn't give you time it's impatient with its players because yeah. it has so many yeah um so i feel like how it's could come good and we'll see his bundesliga self a lot more than we did at chelsea yeah yeah i feel like under arteta's stable managerial position the just the general vibe around arsenal is also much much better than chelsea so mm. yeah like i i feel like he will he will come good uh but speaking of signings man city have also made a great signing in josko guardiol uh the young center back from croatia uh do you think he was just signed because his name is very similar to guardiola did you see the his signing video no oh because that the entire signing video was a play on that so it was guardiola standing in front of a whiteboard huh. making notes huh. and then he writes his own name huh. and then he stares at it for a bit hmm. takes the u out puts a v there hmm. and just wipes the a out and walks away hmm. and they leave stay on guardiol hmm. so they did their whole play um but yeah i feel like it's a great signing it's a great signing also he's a liverpool fan he was a boyhood liverpool fan and liverpool were looking at him and then they said he's too expensive hmm. right and then city went for it i feel like city is just parking him you know what they do right they get a player let him rest for a season or two hmm. use him crazily for another two seasons and then phase out i think that's what's going to happen great fucking signing killed it uh, in his previous club uh, killed it at the world cup killed it at the world cup too yeah <laughs> in fact in his interview uh, guardiola said i went to pep and said thank you for signing me and uh, pep said oh don't thank me thank leo for bringing your uh, net worth down <laughs> <laughs> yeah that yeah i mean i was going to bring that up saying oh city sorry but yeah he got his pants pulled down by messi but then i was like yeah but it was messi yeah, yeah. Like, but it, before you could bring it up pep was like mess starting first thing i'll tell him is the uh, yeah. messi runs so cute that but i think he, i think he's a he's he's a he's a fantastic signing he, he genuinely has the potential to be if he already isn't one of the best center backs in the world yeah uh and he's bargain. left footed <laughs> he's a, he could be a bargain he could be a bargain player <laughs> i don't think any transfer that city <laughs> makes is a bargain yeah um i think he could also be one of those uh, league defining center center backs or defenders i think mm. that, and that's his job right i think yeah. city have a tendency to get those center backs stabilize the team who quickly adapt to the league yeah. and i think he's one of those somehow I think they just outprice everybody all the competition. Hmm. Uh and they did that and I think he's going to be one of those guys who's just going to uh command the defense, yeah. knows what to do. In a probably a season he'll adjust and by next season he'll be the yeah. biggest star on the ground. The the interesting part about this transfer is that he's he's a left-footed center half which are, which is which is which is a position that not a lot of people specialize in. Hmm. And it's crazy how Pep Guardiola is just phasing out the concept of fullbacks. <laughs> right like that that is the genius of this man like wasn't guardiola the the guy who first started using the false nine at barcelona yeah yeah striker hi nahi chahiye bench or forward hi nahi hai bola bhi kya karega like ha, what he is eliminating entire position like he is he is rendering an entire section of players jobless <laughs> like, that is the that is the level of fucking change he is bringing into the world of football not just his club into football because abhi ye wo idhar city mein karega then everybody will follow that shit yeah, yeah. It is ridiculous, but how how is a team supposed to play with five center halves? 
I can't wait for like 10 15 years from now when football's played without goalkeepers because Pep was like no we don't need I feel we, like that's going to be the next thing want. he's yeah. already start he's all, he's already with Edison he's like ha tu aala aage tak you're the center half come come me. come come ahead you want to play up front mm-hmm. you play up front he's, he, I feel like Guardiola told Edison you will touch the ball only five times yeah <laughs> <laughs> after five times we'll give it a handball penalty so tu pair se control yeah, kar yeah i have this theory that i don't know if you know players sometimes swap right like a striker will go play on the right wing or left wing i think he'll do mid game swaps <laughs> <laughs> with the goalkeeper <laughs> rolling keeper no the goalkeeper and the center back will change jerseys because they'll both have a similar skill set yeah. and that's like an extra substitute he can make on pitch no, without really making i one. feel i feel they won't even swap jerseys <laughs> 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 they'll just have edison play in center half Yeah. And Guardiola playing at goal, Goalkeeper. just just to, for everybody else to be like, what the fuck is yeah, going on? How do we adjust? Let this? them, let them. We'll give them a chance. Yeah, yeah. chance. It's to ridiculous. It is fucking ridiculous. I feel like, yeah, this man means genius, a madman, a what? Yeah, he's so good that he's now setting challenges for himself. Yeah. He's like yeah. other people can't challenge yeah. me. I'll challenge myself. Yeah. Let's change the tactics. Yeah. We won everything last season. This season, new tactics. Yeah. Yeah. All right. On that note, let's take a quick break. On the other side, we'll talk about uh, whatever is happening with Harry Kane and some ridiculous goalkeeping tactics uh, in Mexico. I don't know if you've seen the video, but uh, we're going to talk about it. See you on the other side. You like things just so. So do we. The Bank of Clark is the bank for that. We all have an inner perfectionist who deserves things done their way. Maybe you like to bank in person. Maybe you prefer to bank online. We get it. From banking to lending to wealth management, we're all about getting things done just the way you like them. We're the bank for that. Find out what banking designed for you is all about. Visit your local Bank of Clark branch today or go to bankofclark.bank. We're the bank for that. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to the Corner Flag, everybody. And as always, we begin the second half with some questions. Questions, questions, questions with the Corner Flag, dude. Answers also, huh? All right. The first question we have is from Fazil Abbas Banatwala. It's more of a comment. He says, "Just want to say that I enjoyed Arsenal's win. क्या दिन आ गया है as a United fan? Amog, what do you have to say?" I think it was a, a, a fantastic victory for Arsenal. Uh, for the neutral, it was a great game. <laughs> But uh, are you the neutral <laughs> in question? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Very much so. I didn't care who won. Uh, mm. No matter who wins, we lose. So <laughs> <laughs> aliens versus predator, well, a scene here. Whatever. Yeah, but good, good, good for them. Uh, second question is a special question. Okay. From what the fuck kill? Okay. Uh, who asks us? Yes, sir. How many mics do you need, and which of you are single? Yeah. Give me a shout out on your pod, Zaddy. I don't know what Zaddy means. I um, don't know what Zaddy means. Akhil, what is Zaddy? Because Akhil, our producer, is the one who has sent this question in. Akhil, just tell us what the fuck is a Zaddy? Zaddy is uh, actually that's a silly question. What? It's a Gen yeah. Z, it's a Gen Z, Gen Z, Gen Z daddy. daddy. Zaddy is someone I'd like to like. Zad around with. Yeah, Zad around. Yeah, with. Zad around. With. But but. मतलब <laughs> Wait, yeah, so who are you hitting on, Akhil? Which what? Whoever was. Okay, your low standards were a bit high. No, no, no. No, but I'm I'm just saying. You know how? Uh, what what was the he's generation? He's a casting before? producer. He's the first producer to have been <laughs> on the casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> We are uh, setting the trend. We are the Guardiola's of the podcast world. Uh, no, but you, what was the generation before Gen Z? Was it Gen Y? Millennials. millennials. No, no. Mm, yeah, millennials. Yeah. millennials. Okay, didn't mil- millennials did this thing where they just shortened let- like words? No, they took out wo- the random yeah. letters and just shortened the Got words. Bubbles, yeah. So now what Gen Z is doing is they're keeping the 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 size of the word the same and they're just changing the letter. Yeah, yeah. बहुत फ्रीडम दिया है वोक पब्लिक को सब्सटिट्यूशन फॉर नंबर वन डी कमिंग इन जी फकिंग रिडिक्यूलस ऑल राइट बट हाउ मेनी माइक्स वी नीड वी नीड थ्री माइक्स व्हिच वी हैव सो थैंक यू अकिल फॉर राइटिंग इन एंड फॉर सॉर्टिंग अस आउट विद द माइक्स यस व्हिच ऑफ यू आर सिंगल नन ऑफ अस 
yeah none of us are single yeah. but also i would just like to point out the fact that our producer is one of the only people who's writing in questions to us is not a great look for the podcast guys aisa man bolo he also stop writing and then no questions to answer akhil make also, more make... importantly it's not a great look for the producer <laughs> <laughs> also akhil i feel like you need to make like 200 phantom accounts and just start messaging us from one of them like every alternate day Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, amazing. And every just like you can also be word of the day because if we just learn Zaddy next time yeah. something else, yeah. you know, we'll also keep in touch with the youths. Yeah. Basically, use it as a dictionary also. Amazing. For right. those of the for those of the listeners who are wondering what a podcast producer and audio engineer do on a podcast, there's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, the third question is from Shrew underscore eight, who asks us. Would you leave your partner for six months to spend twenty four hours with one footballer? And who's that footballer? Okay, um, couple of couple of questions. Shuru underscore eight. Why would we leave our partner for six months to spend twenty four hours with a footballer? What are we doing for the other five months? How many ever hours, minutes, seconds? What are we doing in that? Time? And what does spending time mean? Yeah, and is it is it like just going out for like a drink, or is it like full blown sex? Oh. Like, yeah, what is the? Because it depends. Because the answer to this question depends. Or what you mean by that depends on how much I watch women's football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, no, I think the answer is none. Yeah. None, none footballers. Yeah. Zero. No, yeah. I don't think. Especially don't for twenty four hours. I feel yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if it's for a month, then I might, I might have considered. Yeah. But I feel because it's twenty four hours. If it's none. for a month, sorry, baby. <laughs> yeah. Our things to do. <laughs> Messy. Here I come. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that's right. your answer. Um. Aryo Samba asks us top four prediction this season. Samba, uh, uh, thank you for writing in, friend of the flag. Uh, thank you for being on a uh, 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 previous episode of the flag as well. We hope your little daughter is doing well. But Samba, please listen to the previous episode. We did an entire prediction segment, bro. Who's my third top four predictions? Prashant ka bhi tha. Aryo Samba, kitne podcast sun rahe the? Farhan dot not dot Bahar asks us after missing out last week. I just want to ask how y'all been. How you all been? Yeah, yeah. Delayed response is uh, is amazing. You yeah. know, when we came back, uh, it was great. I don't know why uh, he missed out. I think he sent in the message, but we didn't have the time to take it on in this in in that episode. Uh, yeah. So we missed his question. I don't think he missed listening to the episode uh, yeah. because that that that's weird. No, I feel like last episode we were talking about how it's nice that people are writing in just to ask us how we're doing. Yeah, yeah. So he's doing what we yeah. requested. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Social engagement. Mm. Mm. Also, again, Farhan. we're doing well, by the way, Fazil. Uh, just to like, uh, Farhan, sorry, Farhan. Uh, we're doing well. Just to yeah. answer, yeah, yeah, your question. Uh, also, Farhan dot not dot Bahar asks us. Also, happy two twentieth episode. Got anything planned for two two two? Uh, thank you for wishing us happy two twentieth episode. Uh. Do we have anything planned for two to two? I am not a cricket person, but even I know that there was that umpire that used to put his legs up. Yeah. So I feel like the entire two hundred and twenty second episode we should do with our legs up in the air. Yeah, I think we can do that. Yeah. I think we can totally do that. I know which podcast I'm missing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Krishy, on the Did last core workout also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Krishy Vanna School twenty five asks us: Will the Community Shield curse repeat? Yes, <laughs> that's my straight answer. Is yes. As a Liverpool fan, you are very, very ad- adamant that uh, the the answer is going to be yes. Yes. कितना no? हरामी लोग होते हैं लोगों को. We can't can't uh, can't relish somebody else's uh, victories and and happiness. Five minutes ago, you said whoever wins, I lose. So, <laughs> how? No, but no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dissing them for winning. No. I'm not uh, 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 wishing ill upon them for winning the community shield. No, I'm like, ah, you guys win, it's good. But we don't get any luck. What is the curse? The, the curse is who wins the community shield, have a sucky season or something like that. So. Oh, Dan doesn't win the Premier League. Have a, oh, they're not going to win the Premier League. But I don't think they're going to have a sucky season as bad as Liverpool did last time. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. they'll still comfortably be in the Champions League spots. Yeah. Uh, but no chance they're winning. No. Because no, it's Man United that's going to win now. No. <laughs> yeah. That's what we have for two to two. A Moog's intervention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're done with the questions. Awesome. Uh, let's go to Spurs because Harry Kane scored four goals against Shakhtar Donetsk. Uh, I feel bad. I I I feel bad making this joke, but I feel bad for Shakhtar Donetsk. Haven't they been through enough already? <laughs> Don't you feel bad for Harry Kane? Hasn't he been through enough already? <laughs> I mean, has, is he going through war? <laughs> has he been? 
under siege for <laughs> negotiating exits with Daniel Levy close enough <laughs> <laughs> so I, but i feel it's it's not it it's his own fault it's his own fault for signing that fucking eight year six year whatever six contract, year contract. It, it, more than his fault it's Charlie Kane's fault yeah it's, it's his, his brother's brother. fault yeah. who's his agent it's his fault for putting that contract on his table and getting him to sign it it's just ridiculous that he signed that contract and he's just wasted his prime years at a club that just cannot cannot achieve anything yeah uh, but he did score four goals in this frankly uh, four very Kane like goals poachers finishes in the right place at the right time perfect finishing learn some things kai habits uh but one of those was from a madison cross one to watch out for for fpl fans he's in my fpl team as of now he's going to suck i know he's I overpriced that's and what, he's going to suck i think uh, that's what our uh, fpl champion gunty was telling me he was like take madison out yeah Like, I agree I with him. I he's a man who is very, very wise. He's the champion of the Corn Flag FPL League. There is a reason why he's wise. Listen to. Him. Actually, don't. Listen, why am I? Don't listen to him. <laughs> he's great. He's great. You should have him. But he did play well. Madison did have a good game. Yeah. Also drew the penalty, uh, which was Kane's first goal. I feel like Madison might surprise us. I think he has a point to prove. He went down with Leicester. This is his first big move. Hmm. I think he'll come good. we'll see but okay g- coming back to kane though do you think this could be his last appearance because it looks like his transfer to bayern is about to happen i i just saw they rejected a 100 million bid. oh okay they just rejected uh, tottenham rejected it so i don't know if, i don't know if bayern have the funds or the bandwidth to come back with a 120 million bid because at this point i don't know if tottenham is really interested i think they want to look like we tr- classic right we tried really hard to sell you but we didn't get the right price yeah and i think 100 million for kane who's close to Close to thirty, you do take that. You don't take any longer. And he has one year remaining. Exactly. Contract. So I, I'm just trying to understand what is Daniel Levy's strategy here. Like, is he okay to let Kane leave on a free? Because I, once bitten, twice shy. I even I feel like Charlie Kane can't be that stupid to sign another contract extension at Spurs. I feel like maybe I think firstly Daniel Levy we have to say is too sharp. The Till about three days ago, Bayern had sent them an ultimatum and said that we have a deadline. This is the deadline that you have to reply by. Hmm. Not only did Daniel Levy not reply by the deadline, but instead he went on holiday <laughs> and put photos up of him going on holiday <laughs> at the airport. So that's fucking amazing. Boss move. But I feel like Daniel Levy's hope is that he can hold on to Harry Kane. Hmm. They have a great season with uh, Postecoglou, and then they can convince him that there is. There are trophies to be won at Tottenham, or just get a better brand of players. I think because if Harry Kane goes and they have a shit season with uh, Post Ante, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ante, then it's done, right? Because then I think to- then Tottenham is officially up going back to being a mid-table club. Yeah, because bigger players are going to come there. Yeah, uh, they don't have the scouting system of say a Brighton or a Brentford. Yeah, to keep replenishing their resources. They haven't had a big signing in a while. A big, I mean, a big signing, a superstar signing like a Son or a. a are are you forgetting Richarlison? I'm not forgetting Richarlison yeah. deliberately. <laughs> <laughs> I think Spurs have forgotten Richarlison. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think it's he is desperate, but also it's a bit of pride. Uh, it's that you got to hang on, give your new manager something to. But that's a big gamble, no? It's a very big gamble. Because it's a massive. Because what's the other gamble? Take the hundred million. You're already all the transfer window is almost done. Go have a shit season. Do what like and then wait till next year. For Are you? Million? But wait, you don't know that they're definitely going to have a shit season because and this is this is one different way of looking at it. I feel like if they did take the money for for Harry Kane, a they're flush with cash. They can reinvest that money and buy some nice young forwards uh, who can do the job. And that entire distraction of the Harry Kane saga will be away from the club. None of the other players will have anything to do with it. They won't constantly be worried about whether their talismanic player is going to stay or go. Their captain now is going to stay or go. Uh, the new manager, and this is a new manager that's come in. It's another headache that he doesn't have to deal with. He can plan for the rest of the season without him, or he commits and then he can plan for the rest of the season with him. Like right now, the way it's 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 set right now, there's a lot of doubt and there's a lot of uncertainty, and that. might be the undoing of a very good very highly rated manager's debut season at a club that he could have in a different scenario gotten to perform yeah i absolutely agree and i feel like the tottenham of today 
is the Tottenham of today only because they accepted that 150 million or 120 million bid for Gareth Bale and then invested it poorly yeah. and then fucked it up for a couple of seasons but then reinvested it well and have become this Tottenham who are now consistently fighting for Champions League, Europa League. So I think this is that, you know, Barcelona keeps pulling levers, financial lever. It's been a while since Tottenham pulled one of those levers. And mm. this is that this is that triple digit lever. They don't have anyone else. And uh, I agree, it's a very big gamble. Just rip that cord, sell him for 100 million. There's still three weeks remaining. We're only on 7th, 8th August today. We've got the rest of August to uh, make more transfers. I think it, they need to pull the plug. Mm. But, okay, now the other, the other way of looking at it is Maybe Levy is right in 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 demanding a 150 million tag. Perhaps if that is the asking price. Uh, that is, I think, what he's asking for. But I thought that was the asking price for a Premier League club, and it was 100 million for. I think he uh, wants 150 because also if he gets 100, 120, you can't think. You have to really get young talent. Like you can't you can't get any slightly premium talent. Also at 100, you probably can get one or two players, which still isn't enough. Uh, I get why. I get why. Harry Kane should go. I get why it's probably uh, better for Harry Kane's career. Mm. But I get why Levy might want to hold on because Harry Kane is also not a player who he's shown his commitment. Even though, even if he's wanted to leave, he's always turned up and scored goals, which I think is great about Harry Kane. Yeah, yeah. That you know that he's going to do his job. Yeah. And I think for a new manager, if he knows that he's guaranteed, say, at least 20 goals a season, yeah. right? That's that's a big thing to not worry about as opposed to starting all the way from scratch. Because yeah. if he goes and they have even a mid-table season or even if there's anything less than seventh, which is a very real possibility sure. without a Harry Kane, then it's all the way down. Then yeah. Ante is not big enough to pull the pull big names. He's not big enough to... He's not a proven name yet who's shown that he can convert into world-class players. He can create good systems, efficient systems, but he hasn't produced world-class players. He hasn't taken a player and made them amazing. Hmm. Like a Klopp or a Guardiola or probably a Ten Hag at Ajax. Hmm. Right? So I do think... Or I a Ten Hag at United, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Only time will tell. He's made Van Basaka better. <laughs> better? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Better? That's yeah, better. I agree. Huh. He's made him better. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I do feel like I see why Daniel Levy <coughs> would desperately want Harry Kane to stay even if it's just one more season. But it's a long term, it's a big hit long term. Like, yeah. I feel like the more prudent step to take would be sell Kane. And I agree, they're not going to be able to re-sign anyone nearly close to that caliber. Mm -hmm. But have one season written off. Play with your Richarlison and Madison and Kulusevski and Sun. You still have a great squad hmm. that is capable of finishing top half, not Champions League football. Sure, give it that one season, reinvest over the next couple of windows in Jan, next summer. But losing out on 100 million, I don't know if Spurs can afford to do that because they don't have any big name assets apart from Kane. Okay, so the other way of looking at it is, I feel like Levy is right because... There's no other strikers on the market that they can replace Kane with. And yeah. that is why, that is precisely why they're pricing him as high as they are. Because the other the other guy who is who is uh, who's widely considered to be at that level is Victor Osman. And Osman is also not for sale at the mm, prices that are being yeah. discussed. No, so I'm saying don't replace Kane <coughs> with a new signing. See, Richarlison. Knows where the goal is. He's not a 30-goal striker for sure. But he's a striker who knows how to score 15, 18 goals in a god-awful Everton lineup. <laughs> Can I, he'll, I'm, get you, he'll get I'm, you confidence in football. You need to stop. You need to stop. Please. I don't <laughs> want to see it. I'm, okay. I'm sorry, but... Akash, you went full football cliche on that one. You went full football pundit. He knows where the goal is. Yeah. Ben Chod, wo professional footballer. Hai. Usko pata hona hai. Wo uska basic job description hai to know where the fucking goal is. To main bol raho, you Dindi have score, Brazil's number 9. Didn't he score one goal last season? Yeah. Because he didn't play. <laughs> he had more yellow cards than goals last he season. Went, he, he had went, more t-shirt removals than he, goals last yeah. season. That, he, he, wo, wo west wale goal pe tha, east wala goal. Pe. <laughs> but he, he didn't get a consistent runner games. He's not. He used to get 15 20 minutes every game. But he knew where the goal was. He should have figured it out. No wonder Akash was impressed by kick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel, I mean, like, I feel like that's honestly what Spurs should be doing. Relying on the squad that they have, getting rid of Kane, playing the long game. Hmm. Cool. 
uh, now that we're done with the analytical talk, let's talk about he knows where the goal is because what the fuck, Atash? Like you, itna bada cliche. You know, this is so. I was I was hearing this on the football ramble, but uh, have you? Uh, do you remember when Kurt Zuma kicked his cat? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, and then Graham Sunets was in the pundit box, and he was asked about this, and this is what he said. <laughs> right, you know, I've got major problems with it. Hmm. For me, that cat had done nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Implying that if there are cats, they do something wrong. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And this is the this is what I mean. Like football people apparently just cannot talk normally. They can't. They only talk in football cliches. But that's why we're doing a football podcast. Yeah. We're, that's we're trying we to be different, dude. We're trying to be different. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I feel like there are strikers. That he's no Timo Werner. He's no Neil Mopé. He is Brazil's number nine for a reason. He will get the goals. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. The reason is there's nobody else in Brazil who plays that number nine role. Gabriel Jesus. Oh, Richardson Zalatar. keeps Gabriel Jesus out of a team. Yes, he's had an awful season at Spurs, but he's. Bro, Gabriel Martinelli has also kept Gabriel Jesus out of the team. Fuck that. And Achilles yeah. Zeal has kept Gabriel Jesus out of the team. So like. I, or what I'm saying is that Spurs have a striker cur- better than currently anyone available on the market. Utilize him, sell uh, Kane. Mukesh, doesn't it feel like this is basically Akash being like she may have left me, but I still love her? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, it is. <laughs> I really miss Richarlison. One side love. <laughs> yeah, he is one side love. He's singing. He's still singing. Why this call very dear and all. <laughs> Okay, it's actually not one side love. Rich Allison's TikTok, which went viral, was him playing for Everton with the soundtrack "I'm So Lonely, I'm Mr. Lonely." <laughs> he also misses Everton. He hates it at Spurs. They're stuck with each other. They need to make the best of a bad situation. Is what I'm trying to say. I say, ये Gen Z लोग वाले बोलते हैं कि ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए. Don't make the best of a bad situation. Get a divorce. <laughs> डेनियल लीवी नहीं बेचेगा उसे नहीं वो तो सही है वो डिवोर्स नहीं करेगा किसी को भी नहीं बेच रहे हाँ सो दैट्स व्हाट इट्स यूटिलाइज व्हाट यू हैव राइट टू एंड द एपिसोड आई जस्ट वांट टू गो टू मेक्सिको ऑल राइट दिस वाट दिस फैंटास्टिक वीडियो I don't know if you guys saw it, but this happened in the <laughs> this happened in the League's Cup. Uh, this was a round of 32 knockout game between uh, uh, Tigres, uh, who are the uh, Mexican League champions, and the Vancouver Whitecaps. Now the the game went to penalties. And Tigres goalkeeper Nahuel Guzman, uh, who's uh, who's made I think seven appearances for Argentina as a reserve goalkeeper, by the way, back in the day, uh, he was he was in goal uh, for Tigres, and for the first penalty kick, his way of distracting the penalty taker was to to act like a mime. <laughs> <laughs> he did the mime routine, <laughs> which was because we've mm-hmm. only seen that on FIFA, and I did that while we were playing FIFA just yeah. a little while ago before the recording. I did that to you, and I still managed to save the penalty. Or you missed it. You missed the I penalty missed when it. I did the mime. So he had the, <laughs> he had the correct thought. He had the correct thought process, but uh, he ended up conceding the goal. Uh, but then for the next penalty kick, he took it to the next level. He uh, he motioned to the referee that he wasn't feeling well. So the referee had to stop for a little while, and he just looked like he was about to cough or something, and he started clutching his face, and then he just took a string out of his mouth. You know those typical clown <laughs> endless string. string, endless like string, like a magician's act. <laughs> never he, really he took all of that out of his mouth, <laughs> took it all, took it all, took it all, left it at the side of the goal, and just like dusted himself off, and then looked at the referee and said, "Ha, huh, now I'm okay." <laughs> like this was really causing me distress. <laughs> And then he goes to save. Or he goes to save the penalty. Oh, that's amazing! Uh, yeah, but like, of course, he saved the penalty because you can't score after that. <laughs> it was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and the previous penalty, even the guy must have been like, "Ye to maine FIFA pe bhi dekha hai. What is this my act?" And then he's like, "Ye FIFA, this is genuinely new content." <laughs> <laughs> and that's what preparation is. You know, every time yeah. there's a there's there's a penalty shootout, we look at. Keepers bottles and he's like, oh, Madison kicks left, Kane kicks right, and all. That's not preparation. This guy for 120 minutes had that in him. Yeah, and pulled it out. It's That's... ridiculous. It's fantastic. And also, what was his plan if there was no penalties in the game? They could go to the dressing room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be so sad. <laughs> Especially like, if they lost. Dramatic. Yeah, <laughs> the <laughs> managers just like, what the fuck are you playing like? You know, the, 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 the defense. Where's your organization? Where's your positioning? Midfielders, why aren't you pressing? Goalkeeper, sorry, boss. Yeah, yeah, just just taking time. the string out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I feel like the coach before the game must have gone up to Nuella, whatever his name is, and said. 
Noella and said, "Noella, today I need you to be Amy Martinez." And he's like, "Got it." <laughs> Crazy antics. I do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> oh, amazing. Do you think he's going to pull out a rabbit out of his hat for the next game? I hope I had. <laughs> <laughs> no where else. Yeah. Haven't they banned these keeper tactics? Back? I think he's getting that one last one in before the rule comes into play. Mm. Yeah, there's always one someone has to do the final big act yeah. that just. But that's great. Like he's he's representing all goalkeepers in that moment. He's like if you're taking this vital aspect of the game away from us, then i'm going to go out with a fucking bang <laughs> like i'm going to give the world something to remember me and goalkeepers in general by and for that we salute him and as, as three goalkeepers we fucking salute him yeah. well done well done nahul gasman on that note it is time to end this episode of the corner flag thank you so much everybody for listening if you'd like to get in touch with us and tell us what you thought of this episode or any other episode you can reach us on our social media you can find mukesh on instagram at Mukesh Manjanath. You can find Akash on Instagram at Akash Chandan, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram as Amog Randeve. That's because his name is Amog in big bold letters written right in the front of his T-shirt sleeve. 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 <laughs> Messed up the joke. <laughs> Messed up the joke because you didn't pay attention at the start of the podcast. In the start of the podcast. Uh, you can also uh, follow the Corner Flag on Instagram and Twitter at the rate Corner Flag Pod. Do visit our website, thecornerflag. dot in. Uh, uh, support us by buying us a coffee on buymeacoffee. dot com slash thecornerflag and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And do not forget to leave us a five star review. Shout out to Kazad Gurda for composing our theme tune. And until next week, it is goodbye from us. So say bye, Mukesh. Bye, guys. Say bye, Akash. Bye. And it's bye from me. 